In this lesson, we're going to learn about a different method we can use to help calculate our sample variance and our sample standard deviation. And to start off, we chose a nice data set to work with, which is symmetrical. Two, four, five, six, and eight are our data points. And we're going to use a table to take a look at this. And once you understand how to use this table for the sample standard deviation and the sample variance, you'll be able to apply this to the population variance and population standard deviation. It'll be the same process. So let's start off by creating that table. First of all, we have our x values. We're going to build this nice little table right here. And those x values are 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Now, if you recall from our average formula, our average formula is the sum of all the values divided by the number of them. And I'm going to bring this up here so we can take a look at this a second. We'll come back to the table in just a minute. So this is our average formula right there, just what I said. So we're going to add up this column of all these values of these x's right here. So 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 5 is 11, plus 6 is 17, plus 8 is 25. So the sum of all the x's is equal to 25. Our sample size is the number of items in this data set. And you can see that there's five data points, so n is equal to 5. So when we calculate our average, our average is simply going to be x bar is equal to the sum of all those values, which is 25, divided by the number of them, which is 5. So our average happens to be 5. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start working on our variance formula. And our variance formula looks like this right here. And at first, it kind of looks messy and it looks a little difficult, but it's really not that bad if we think in terms of order of operations. And when we do this table, we're going to take a look at the difference between individual data point and our average. We're going to square that, and then we're going to add all of those differences squared up, and then we're going to divide by n minus 1. And the table helps break it down into step by step. So order of operations, we'd start with the parentheses first, x minus x bar, which is our average. So when we do this, we're going to come over here and we're going to do our next column as x minus x bar, starting inside those parentheses. So this is going to be 2 minus 5. This is going to be 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. 2 minus 5, by the way, is negative 3. 5 minus 5 is equal to 0. 6 minus 5 is equal to 1. 8 minus 5 is equal to a positive 3. Now, one important property or one important check to take place here is if we add up the, the values in this column, in other words, we add those up, sum up x minus x bar, this should actually be equal to 0. Now, the only time you're not going to get exactly 0 is if you round or truncate values like your average or things like that. So that's the only time, but it should be very close to 0 when we go through and we check this. So once we've taken those differences, now we want to take the square of those differences. So we're working outside the parentheses. So we're looking at the x minus x bar, or x minus our average, squared. Now before we get there, I want to mention one thing. If you think about this, we're really finding the distance the point is from the average. So that's what this column is really doing right here, is finding that distance. And we're going to be squaring that distance. So now think of it in terms of units. If this distance happened to be in meters, now we're going to be in meters squared. And this will be important for what we talk about in just a little bit. So we're going to take each one of these values. So negative 3 squared is equal to 9. Negative 1 squared is equal to 1. 0 squared is equal to 0. 1 squared is equal to 1 and 3 squared is equal to 9. Once we do the uh, squaring of these, the next thing that it says to do is we come in here and we look at this summation sign right here. And the sum means to take and add everything up. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll write this down, the sum of x minus the average squared. And when we do that, it's going to be 9 plus 1, which is 10, plus 0, which is 10, plus 1 is 11, plus 9 is 20. So now we have the top half of our formula figured out, and so we can start writing this down and plugging those numbers in. So s squared is equal to 20 divided by n minus 1, and n is still our sample size, so that's going to be 5, so that's going to be 5 minus 1. And when we do the math with this, 20 divided by 5 minus 1, which is 4, our s squared value is going to be equal to 5 and I'll label these for you so we don't get confused later on. Our variance right here is equal to 5, and s squared is our variance. 
So that's our variance. Now we want to calculate our standard deviation. And our standard deviation formula looks like this right here. Our standard deviation formula is simple, simply the square root of what we had before for our variance. In other words, we're, we're solving to get s all by itself in this original equation. If we figure out our variance, all we have to do is take the square root of that. Standard deviation is s is equal to the square root of 5. And the square root of 5 is approximately 2.236. So that's our standard deviation. Now I wanted to come back to this and talk about this for a little bit so that way we understand it. But over here when we worked at this, I referred to this as our distance right here. And then we're squaring that, so we're in terms of distance squared for this, uh, this part right here. So x minus, it's average, that's our distance squared. And then we divide it by n minus 1 right here. And basically we're finding the average distance a point is from the average. So we're finding that average distance. And this happens that when we're in variance, we're, we're in uh, units squared. So this would be meters squared. So the average distance from the center would be 5 meters squared for the variance. Now when we take the square root of that, this puts it back into, in, into meters, which is a term which is very similar to our average. And this is why I like the standard deviation over the variance. When we take the square root of this, this would be 2.236 meters. This would be the average distance a point is from the average in the same units as the average. So it's really nice and easy to compare. And this is something to think about when you go through and do this. Hopefully this will help you with calculating the standard deviation and the variance. And you should be able to apply this to the population variance and the population standard deviation as well.